right? Oh, no way. There's a clean Diana over there. And then there's dirty Diana. Huh. Well, that entirely threw off my intro. Anyways. So, today we're back. This is kind of a multi-car episode. We got a bunch of stuff to do on the three of them here. The Prelude is going to get its own videos coming up soon. I'm going to be putting the K back in there and hopefully getting it running by my birthday in a month. It's usually what I do every two years or so. Take the car apart, put it back together as a birthday present to myself. Anyways, getting sidetracked here. So, we have a list of stuff to get done today. And let's see if we can get it to focus on it. Is that there? Yep. So we get all that done, take the suspension off the CRX to throw on there. The CRX is getting its own brand new stuff, everything. So it's Civic's kind of getting the hand me downs, hand me ups, hand me sideways, whatever you want to call it. And then let's get into it now. So here's all the stuff we're doing today. Well, some of the new bits. So I got the new door panels. Looks like it just needs to be cleaned up right there for the S2000. Uh, we got the new blocks control arms that have been sitting in the room for about a month and a No, more than that. Probably about three to four months now. So I'm just waiting to find rear disc trailing arms and apparently they've gone extinct now. <laughs> the spoon style valve cover I painted up over the weekend for the S2000. And the rest of the stuff is on the car and just has to come off. Come off. Let's see. Let's see the K Sports. See the K Sports back there. And they're still pretty, pretty stiff. They're not blown. If anything, the collars are probably frozen, but that's fine. I unfrozen them before I'll just sit them in a bucket of oil overnight and then grab it with two pipe wrenches and it usually separates so let's get into doing the clean stuff first by starting on the s2000's door panels reason we got new ones because we got a nice little rip over here a couple more over there I'm not sure where that came from but has to be changed and on the passenger side Don't know what this is. Looks like a burn of some sort. I've tried everything and it just won't come out. So I got a pair of new ones. Let's build those ones. But honestly, you've got to know that this ain't living, but we could run from Elysium and let it
can't believe myself I never thought that this would be our end But it's nothing new And my lover's honesty I can push it back, push it back down if I have to If you want me to Cause we can What's left to lose if we So we got the passenger side on. This looks so much better to me already. Just gotta give it a little bit of a cleaning like the other side. But no longer have that burnt mark over here. No longer have the rips over there. And very happy with this now. This has been bothering me since day one with the car. But let's get on to some more important stuff. I wasted too much time fussing around with the uh, door panels. So let's get on to the important stuff and the Civic and CRX. Came out really good for just painting it by hand. Um, got the color pretty much down perfect to the spoon one. Eventually I will get a real spoon one. This was just kind of a placeholder. I wanted to see how I liked it. Might even just stay with this one instead of buying a $600 valve cover that does nothing different from the factory one. Just comes in a spoon box. So. All I'm missing now is the spoon oil cap, the spoon coil pack covers, spoon radiator stays, and the spoon strut tower bar, and it'll look just like the catalog car, the one that I'm uh, modeling this one after. I'll put a picture in, you see what I mean? But I like where it's at right now. All right, so the case ports are definitely a little bit worse off than I thought they were. It's been a while since I took a look at them, but they can't be no worse than that. And if they give the illusion that the car is higher than what it actually is, even better, then we'll get a sticker because I'm tired of these meter maids coming around and basically revenue hunting. <laughs> Anyways, so let's get on to throwing these on the car. Kind of just grinded through it, figured everyone's seen coilovers and stuff coming out and going in. There's no need to show that. 
So, we'll join you again once we see how the car sits up front, and then we'll move on to the back. All right, here we are with the EK. So far, we've gotten the one control arm and the one case, case board uh, coilover on, on the passenger side. And then we got over to the driver's side. One broken head, two broken heads, three broken heads. Let me just get a huge chain of Fs in the comment section because uh, this fucking sucks. It's gotten too late to wear won't be able to be cutting. So I'm probably gonna hold up here for now and pick up on another day. This sucks. It's... Yeah. <sighs> sucks, man, because the rest of this car, all the top side, everything else underneath, it's really not that bad. The other side, all three of those bolts came out just for practice to see if they actually would come out. So be taken off the. Sorry about that, dropped y'all. Um, oh. We'll be taking the trailing arms off to do the rear disc and five lug at the same time. So I wanted to make sure that came out easily. And then doing the lower control arm, I had to make sure the inner bolt came out as well. This really sucks. It slowed me down greatly. But we'll pick up some cutting wheels for the grinder and then get this sorted tomorrow, if not the following day. But using YouTube magic, we'll be cutting that off now. It's a uh, bad one there. Bad control on there. Anti seize people. Routine maintenance. Every time you take a bolt out, grease it, anti-seize. Just so the next time you gotta do this or be courteous to the next owner. So now we're up to this one. I'm not too worried about this one being chewed up like that. This is legit so the car can go three miles down the street, if that. Get a sticker and come back and not be bothered on the street anymore. Since we're doing the five lug with the rear disc conversion, I'm just gonna grind this smooth, paint it up so it doesn't rust out like that and then call it good for the day. Um, yeah, other than that, don't have too much to do. We already got the other side done, and then we can go get it inspected. So let's see. All right, so we wrapped up doing the lower control arms finally, and the car actually drives a lot better now that it's lifted, and the coilovers aren't blown actually. Uh, readjusted them a little bit off camera just to like readjust preload and all that and that's where the little bit of bounce came from when it was playing with them outside of the car I mean, in the CRX they didn't bounce um, we drove the car a few times it has been a couple days that passed um, trying to get an inspection sticker it's, it's ridiculous in mass all the more reasons to move to Texas and Florida and or Florida <laughs> um, so let's take a look at the control arms don't know how well they're gonna show, but there they are, black blocks, lower control arms. Got them on both sides. And then, that's about it, that's how they look. Still got the stock exhaust, so it looks like it's starting to rust away. So we'll be changing that once we get a passing sticker, because again, Massachusetts. All right. So yeah, that's the end of this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and we'll see you next time on Mojo Garage. Actually, show you how uh, interesting the cold start has been on uh, E85. The only regret I do have changing to E85 is that the uh, S2000 no longer is a bug repellent. So there's a pool in the backyard so it attracts mosquitoes and all kinds of other insects. But when I ran the car, they didn't dare come in the driveway. Now they're just happy hanging out. So just give you a quick little how the uh, car likes cold starting or doesn't like cold starting on E85. Okay, so today I decided to make a liar out of me.
All right, we'll catch you guys next time on Mojo Garage. Thanks for watching.